Hi everyone, I'm sorry I've been gone for a while. I've been really consumed by the work that I'm doing for the Oxford Center for the Study of the Bible, uh, which is a really interesting interdisciplinary academic center at the University of Oxford and Oriel College, where we're focusing on all sorts of different interdisciplinary studies of the Hebrew Bible and thinking about the ways that religion is understood in antiquity all the way through the modern era. So it's been really exciting to be able to be a part of that community. Um, it's where I did my master's. I'm still employed there. We're working on some really exciting uh, edited volumes and conferences and seminars. Um, I'll add a link to it so you could check out everything we're doing, but it's been really exciting to be a part of that. Um, but over the last few days, I found myself uh, back in a headspace thinking about American art, and in particular, this painting, Old Mill, by Winslow Homer, which he did just after the Civil War. And so this painting is at the Yale University Art Gallery in New Haven, Connecticut. It's part of the American Paintings and Sculptures Department, where I worked when I was a student there. And so I saw this painting all the time, and I feel like every time I see it, I realize something different. Um, but one of the things that I always think about when I encounter this painting is the way that Winslow Homer is able to capture a sense of both time passing and of waiting in a still image. And so when we think about painting, um, one of the most sort of obvious things about a painting is that it is still. It's capturing one moment in time. And so if we're going to build up a narrative that spans over a length of time and has sort of action to it, the artist has to create tensions and indicate how time had passed and is going to proceed without actually showing us any movement. And Winslow Homer's really an expert at this. Um, so in addition to being a fine artist, he was first a commercial illustrator and he was largely self-trained. Harper's Magazine sent him to the front lines of the Civil War to give us a sense of what was happening there. And he really developed this skill of showing action and progress and momentum in still images. So if we take a look at this painting here, we're looking at a scene just after the Civil War, where economic necessity really made it um, necessary that women would go to work, um, particularly work in factories. So we have here in the background this factory um, there's this sort of unstable, shall we call it, bridge that's bridging over from this group of women over into where the factory is. We have a cute little dog here, which is always very exciting for me. My dog's sitting right there. Um, and so we have a lot of different ways that Homer is showing us a transformation in time and space and in American culture by showing us just one small detail of someone's everyday life. So what we're seeing here may not actually seem that dramatic at first glance. It's just a woman on her way to work, but when we think about it in a larger context, it starts to take on a lot more meaning. So this one woman in red is standing alone on the illuminated bridge. The light is coming down and casting a shadow on her and she's separating away from these other women who are standing here. So not only is she going off to work for the first time, but she's making a major break from the life that she knew before. She's stepping away from the community that she knows, from her friends, from the life that she has always lived, to go into this new space. And it's sort of unclear as to what that new space is going to be like. And that tension and anxiety is highlighted by the precarious nature of this bridge that she has to cross over to get there. It's not sort of an easy, safe, and simple walk to leave everything behind to go into this new space. She has to go over this sort of makeshift bridge situation with unknown consequence off into the future, not because of anything she herself has chosen to do, but out of a sense of necessity and out of a necessity that was created by a broader political situation that she herself had no control over. So the Civil War came, she no longer had the sort of economic stability that she and her family presumably had before, so she has to break away and go off into this dangerous new space 
and create something new for herself. And so we have here sort of a dual consciousness. We have the sadness that I think we can really see on her face. She's looking down, her face is covered in shadows by this hat she's wearing. She's looking at her feet, she's casting shadows on the ground. She's taking very small steps. Um, her skirt is blowing back behind her, so we have the sense that the wind is blowing in her face and making it even more difficult for her to get where she's going. Um, but we also have this sense of excitement maybe, um, of anticipation, of mystery, of the independence that she ultimately will gain by being able to step away and go into this new space. So I think it's very clear that this woman here in her bright red dress is sort of the focal point of the painting, but when we look at the broader painting and pick out some of the details in the rest of the image, we get a further sense of the stillness of this one moment in a very quick sort of context. And so the thing that I think is most interesting here is this bell that's right on top of the factory. That's sort of a hallmark of the industrial age. And it's the way that time is organized. Um, it's actually uh, flowed over from factories into our schools. In schools, if you think about when you went to middle or high school, your day is organized by the ringing of a bell. A bell controls your freedom of mobility, your uh, freedom of where you are and what you are doing, and delineates the passing of time. Um, so by crossing over this bridge and parting with the life she had lived before, she's giving up a sense of autonomy and control over her time. And this bell, in mid-swing, signaling the start of the day, is telling us that she's at the beginning, not only of a new day, but really a new chapter of her life. So she's leaving what she knew behind to go into something new that is organized really by this bell and whoever mysteriously is pulling it. We can't even see because the rope for the bell goes behind the house, behind the factory, excuse me. Um, and when the bell is in mid-swing, it's showing us that inevitably the bell is going to swing back. We know that when something is suspended in the air like this, gravity is gonna pull it back to the center. So we have a sense that there is movement and time is passing before and after this painting. Time was passing when the bell was first pulled down to get it into this position. And we know it's about to swing back and ring again. And all of this happens in just a matter of seconds. But in this painting, it's drawn out to this really extended moment of really reckoning with what this woman is about to go through and the change that she's about to have in her life. So when we think about when we wake up in the morning and our alarm rings and we're off to work in the days when we would go off to work, um, this isn't a slow process. This isn't something we're necessarily mulling over as we go through it. Um, you know. She's standing and talking to her friends, the bell rings, she turns, she walks up the ramp and goes into the factory. You know, these few moments um, of time in reality get extended and focused on in a really monumental way in this painting. And they show us the importance of these quick moments that pass us by. And so as we're sitting here between actual election day and finding out exactly what the results are, I kept coming back to this painting and thinking about the ways that, as a country, we really are like this woman crossing over this bridge. Um, we are breaking apart to a small degree from a really difficult period of time, from a really difficult history, and we're taking a step onto really unfirm ground. We're taking a step away from a past that we have come to know and going off into a future that we hope will bring us uh, some sense of possibility and excitement that we have lost in our immediate past. And we, we may not be thrilled about sort of what's at the end of this bridge. This woman is not excited to be going to work in a factory. 
um, but she recognizes the necessity of breaking away from the difficult uh, past that she has just experienced and trying to create something new for herself. And so this moment that in reality is just a few seconds is incredibly transformative. And when we think about the state we're in, it's a few days, um, at most a week, um, but seems like likely not, um, that we're crossing over this bridge into a space of the unknown, of uncertainty, but what is certainly a break from our past. And what seems like an eternity when we've paused and focused just on this time, when we zoom out, will hopefully just be what was a quick walk to work in the morning and the beginning of something really exciting and new and productive. Um, even if it is just a job in a factory, even if it's not the, the radical upending of the last four years of the Trump administration that some of us, certainly I, was hoping for, um, it's a step away from something destructive towards something productive.